Yo, what is going on everybody? Expert Gamer here bringing you guys my review for Dragon Ball Super episode 29 titled It's settled, we're holding a martial arts match, the team captain stronger than Goku, which is an insanely long title by the way, but I really like this episode, a lot of good stuff came out of it, just like the last episode in this new arc or saga. They're really stepping up the animation game and everything's been looking crisp. I haven't seen anything that I didn't like. Like it's all toasty right now, some crisp. But leave a like if you enjoy and let's get right into the review. So where it left us off is everybody is in a room and they're just gonna go over discussing the tournament rules, where it's gonna be held and Shampa suggests that they hold it on a nameless planet. And yes, it's literally a nameless planet, no name for it, which he does name later on in the episode, but we'll get to that. But the only problem with going onto this planet is that the only thing that it has is a sun. There's no atmosphere, nothing. So they wouldn't be able to breathe. They just instantly die. So Beerus was like, since you brought it up and the planet isn't okay, you figure out the planet stuff and let's move on to figuring out these rules. So Goku suggests that they use the Budokai Tenkaichi rules, which are, if you didn't know, to lose a person would have to surrender or fall out of the ring and no killing is allowed. Another rule that Vegeta added in is that no extra weapons can be used like I'm assuming that he means a sword or something just something along those lines and also the use of supplements is not allowed so like something like steroids you can't use and then of course he also said a paper test should be conducted as well so that it prevents any stupid people unable from reading the rules to participate in the tournament which is in the end a good idea but Poor Majin Buu, he's way too stupid. <laughs> he's way too stupid to get that stuff. Um, Spoiler, actually no, I won't save it. It's in the next manga chapter. If you want to go check it out, something about the written test, go check it out, but no spoilers. But moving on, Shampa and Vados leave. And when Shampa leaves, he was like, that Goku guy has such dull reactions because Shampa, before he left, he threw something at him to keep. And I was just like an egg, like those eggs that they brought out last episode. And he threw one at Goku to keep. And Goku had pretty slow reactions to catching the egg. So Shampa's underestimating Goku right now, saying that he has slow reactions, they're dull. Basically, he'll be really easy to knock out in the tournament, which is good that he's underestimating him because Goku will argue arguably be the second strongest fighter unless Vegeta surpasses him again, which I don't I don't know if he will. I think Goku's going to stay the strongest, but he's going to be underestimating him. Then when Goku actually starts fighting, Shampa's going to be blown away. So that's going to make for some good story and screen time. But something that came cool around this point in the episode to me is that the weighted clothing that Vegeta and Goku were wearing, I never realized how heavy it was. So basically they took it off and then they threw it onto the ground and literally it just started sinking into the ground like all the way down and that's crazy like how much would it actually have to weigh to do that on earth? Like how much would something have to weigh to put it on the ground and have it sink in? I just find that so crazy because like in Dragon Ball Z we saw Goku and Vegeta's training progress as they got stronger and stronger and now they're training under such harsh and intense conditions like it's crazy to think about how strong they've gotten. But Whis and Beerus are ready to go back to Earth just to have some more food so they take Goku and Vegeta along and they're discussing with Bulma the Super Dragon Balls and asking her if she can make a Super Dragon Ball radar. But before they get too deep into that idea, Bulma suggests that they just find the Earth's Dragon Balls, call Shenron, and then wish for the location of the last Super Dragon Ball. Because if you didn't catch the last episode, which you should go definitely check out, check out the review though, but um, if you missed the last episode, Shampa said, if you win, I will give you six of the seven Super Dragon Balls that I own. So they still have to find one more, and Bulma was just going to ask Shenron for the location of the last Dragon Ball and that's actually a really good idea like props to her for thinking of that so Vegeta goes off really fast and gathers all the Dragon Balls just because Beerus asks, asks him to and it's funny because when Vegeta comes back Beerus calls him like his little errand boy like he's his slave or servant or something and I just found that really funny because that's basically what Vegeta is doing like he has so much respect for Beerus 
in the end, he's just trying not to get killed. Like, if Beers went mad, you know, he might be like, hey, you're Vegeta, you're pretty cool, you do stuff for me, let me not kill you, but... So Vegeta comes back and they call for Shenron, and of course now they get three wishes with the Earth's Dragon Balls. So Bulma immediately just says like, hey, can you give us the location of the last Super Dragon Ball that we need to find? And Shenron is just straight up like, I can't. The universe is way too vast and it's beyond my power to try to find one thing throughout such a large universe. Like, I just can't do that. Which is so understandable because you're just trying to find a planet-sized orb in an entire universe. Like, that orb is literally just like a speck to the entire universe. So I can see why that's beyond his power to grant. Which is really unfortunate because now Bulma actually does have to go make the Super Dragon Radar. And calling Shenron and gathering the Dragon Balls was pretty much a waste because Beerus eventually just says like... Okay, no, Shenron was like, you have three wishes still though, so go ahead and grant your three wishes. And Beerus literally just says, I wish for you to go away. And of course, Shenron is really like, respectful of beer, so he instantly just vanishes away and all the wishes are gone. But the funny thing is, I was sitting here in my chair like, King Kai is still dead, like you could bring him back to life right now. But that was before this scene came up where Goku, he was like, I know I'm forgetting something that I should have wished for. And then it just cuts to like King Kai's planet, which is so funny. He's gonna stay dead for a while, but he'll, he'll eventually get revived, I think. But for now, no. So while all of this is going on, Vados and Shampa are moving through the universe with the Super Dragon Balls. They're gonna go back to that nameless planet. And when they arrive there, this is when um, Shampa names the planet. He pl I think he named it, what does he name it? Hold on. Okay, he named it Planet With Nothing, literally all caps, just Planet With Nothing. I don't know if that's gonna be the official name of this planet, like, oh, the universe tournament was held on Planet With Nothing. Like, I don't know, but <laughs> it's comical, it's comical, I'll give him that. So, while they're there, obviously there's still no atmosphere, so... I did not know that Vados and Whis had the power to do it. Now, I don't know that Whis has the power, but I'm just assuming that he does, because Vados does, but literally... She made an arena, like a big glass dome over the planet, and what happened was... Okay, sorry, I don't know what that was. Dude, I think it's so windy outside right now, that like, the wind just slammed my bathroom door. I'm pretty sure that's what just happened, but... So, the glass dome gets wished upon right there by her powers, which I knew that they could do stuff like that, and then... She literally just creates an atmosphere for the dome, like, she was able just to make an atmosphere pop out of nowhere, and I just find that so cool, because if she can make an atmosphere appear in a little dome, I wouldn't put her past her to be able to make the entire planet an atmosphere. But you might be saying, so why didn't she just do that? I think they did the dome thing just so that the entire arena and the entire fight is more controlled, so it's easier to, so it's, easy, it's just easier to keep track of everything. And then she goes off to make the arena, she puts some food stands, a painting of Beerus and Shampa, and the entire arena is ready to go for the tournament. Now, for people who are straying away from the manga and don't want any spoilers, this is when you get a hint of some really fresh materials. So, Vados asks Shampa, who are you going to pick for the fight? Like, who are you going to get? And Vados, or Shampa points out that they have two Saiyans on Universe 7 side, so I should go grab a Saiyan too. So that's just a hint of who Shampa is planning to get on this team. Now, other than that from the anime, we don't know who he's going to get on this team, but obviously I know because I've been reading the manga. But for the people who haven't, you guys don't know yet. So Universe 6 will be getting a Saiyan, which is still really cool to me. But towards the end of the episode right now is when things start getting weird. Like, this was so, like, it caught me off guard. And that was another door that just slammed. Yo, it is so windy right now outside. I live in California and it's so rainy and windy. That's crazy. But cut back to Earth right now. So everybody's just sitting around a table eating. And Beerus and Whis finish up. And they're like, okay, well, we have to go back and get our fighter that we're picking for the tournament called Manaka. And of course, Goku's all like, Manaka, who's this guy? Like, I really have to know, is he that strong that you guys would pick him out? And Beerus just flat out says, this is the strongest dude I have ever fought. Stronger than you, Goku, and even stronger than Vegeta. So Goku's really pumped up to lead this guy, and Beerus and 
what's his name? Weiss. I forgot his name for a second. Beerus and Weiss, they go back to go try to find him. And cut to the next morning. Bulma just finished the Super Dragon Ball Radar. And she's actually really skeptical about Beerus. Because right before Beerus left, he was saying that gods don't use the super dragon balls for wishes but if he did he would literally wish for the world to be destroyed and Bulma's is really skeptical about him now because she wants to prevent him from making that wish and get the super dragon balls before he does so she calls up tights and tights gets jacko for Bulma and it's funny, Bulma uses Vegeta as intimidation to Jacko. She's like, if you don't come here right now, I'll get Vegeta. And then she starts talking to Vegeta on the line. And Jacko's instantly coming to Earth now to pick up Bulma. So Bulma's skeptical about Beerus and really wants to stop whatever wish he wants to make. And Goku and Vegeta are, of course, fine with it. They think he was joking, but Bulma's really paranoid about the whole situation. So that's pretty much the entire episode. That Bulma and Beerus part caught me off guard. I really want to know if she's going to follow through with trying to get the Dragon Balls before him. Because that could make for an interesting story. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Let me know what you guys definitely thought about this episode. I'm hyped for the next episode. Because in the previews, we got some action of Gohan and Piccolo training. So that's awesome. But you guys will see me on Sunday again next week. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'm going to head out of here now. Peace out, everybody.